Hey, you make toes. Man, I have just finished a week of being so fucking sick, it's been insane. <laughs> I was, uh, I took apart a heater system on a, on a, uh, sort of a classroom bus thing, uh, the other day. And, uh, well, a week or so ago. And, uh, I must have picked something up out of the heater because, man, was it bad. <laughs> it, um... It was a um, turned out to be a bacterial infection, and I've been a, I've been sick since uh, since uh, Monday. Actually, since like last weekend, I've been working overtime too, and uh, I guess it was enough to cause me to uh, come down with that cold. Pretty brutal. It turned out. I mean, I s sat on it for a while trying to get better, but it turned out to. Uh, I ended up having to go to the to the doctor, uh, sort of urgent care, which is not quite emergency, and uh, basically got uh, got it looked at, and it turned out to be a bacterial infection that was not exactly strep throat. The doctor really didn't know what the fuck it was, <laughs> but it was uh, it was pretty pretty intense. Well, I've got a lot of wood chipping to do here. <laughs> Sheesh. And uh, I didn't realize how much it would have, would be. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, most of this stuff is going to be chipped up through my wood chipper. And it's going to be on my gardens probably in 2000, fall of 2015 or so. Yeah. I'm getting close to the time where I can plant a few cold weather crops. But anyway, uh, the uh, idea of this video, I mean, I was watching another YouTuber's videos. He was talking about saving money, and you know how I am about that. <clears throat> uh, basically, he was uh, talking about how important that sort of thing was, and <laughs> I'm, I'm on board with that. But, uh, but basically, it's money... <clears throat> money is like force it's like power and it's something that we can squeeze down into a very transportable form uh, gold silver even folding money bank accounts that sort of thing but uh, and and that money is uh, able to save our ass if we ever get in trouble and this cold that I just that I just got over it's it's it was basically if I ran into a situation like that and I had no no financial resources for example uh, I would you know if I was working day to day somewhere I would my income would have stopped during that week and I would have been sick and I might not have had insurance and I might not have been able to get to the doctor and get that amoxicillin that I was prescribed and then I might be circling the drain right about now because it was serious. I mean, I, I used the colloidal silver vapor technique that I told you guys about before, but it was just barely holding, holding it at bay. <laughs> it was not making progress at all. Uh, but it really did help. You could, you could feel the difference like 20 minutes after I, like I gargled and used the vapor, uh, you could really see, you could really feel a difference, but uh, it wasn't enough to get rid of the problem. <clears throat> so basically, I was just, uh, you know, I could have been circling the drain, ready to go down the, down it, <laughs> go down, so to speak, for the count, if I hadn't had the resources to, uh, to do what I did and get to the doctor and all that good stuff. So, money is power it's and it's extremely important for everybody but even more important for MGTOWs like us because man my parents and my family taught me many years ago that you can't depend on family <laughs> it's a kind of a sad lesson but it's a very important one that you just cannot count on people to help you if you're in trouble so um, I mean if they're there help you with 
if you're when you're in trouble that's great but don't count on it <laughs> otherwise you could be in trouble <clears throat> they might just decide well rather than pulling him into our small lifeboat uh, I might just want to cut him loose and let him drown <laughs> and if you're a guy you're more likely to be cut loose <laughs> so um, anyway that got me thinking about wealth now how is wealth measured is it measured in dollars um, or is it measured in stuff you know like houses or cars or stuff like that <clears throat> I don't think so I think wealth is measured in time for example how much time do you have if your income suddenly stopped how long could you live as comfortably as you are now or even with some cutbacks how many months can you live before the uh, eviction notices or the foreclosure notice starts showing up and uh, how long until the police show up to kick you out of your house and into the street you know <clears throat> that's what wealth is I think now may when you measure it like that I'm pretty sure that I have more wealth than a lot of lawyers and there, there might even be some millionaires who are less wealthy than I am because my expenses my month-to-month -month expenses <clears throat> are freaking small man <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a spendthrift wife demanding to go to Bloomingdale's every other day um, I don't have any of that stuff I just have myself and my dad, he lives in one of the spare bedrooms, and periodically my sister shows up to uh, to visit and stuff. But uh, but um, basically, they aren't liabilities. So um, when you measure it, you know, in months, man, I probably I could probably live a couple years before I start running out of cash, and it's. And it's just hugely important. And if your month, if you can adjust your budget and maybe cut out a little bit of something here or there, like get rid of that. For example, if you're if you own your cell phone outright, look into a um, another method uh, like that, uh, like those month to month, like those month to month uh, places. Like you can you can sometimes get a fifty dollar a month cell phone bill instead of a hundred dollar a month cell phone bill now if you add that up that's like six hundred dollars over a year so that's six hundred dollars less that you uh that you have that you have to spend there's a seagull <laughs> you can tell that i live fairly close to the ocean <laughs> So anyway, um, money is power, and that money is a is force packed into a small package. And that package, if you uh, if you adjusted it and if you've uh, nurtured it along, um, that package could save your ass someday. And in fact, it's a good chance that it will, because uh, there are disasters that you can go through. You know, everybody talks about comets hitting the earth or or uh, <laughs> or economic collapses that bring us down to the road warrior level but uh, um, those are very rare occurrences if they occur at all I mean like the collapse in Argentina that's probably the worst we would ever see here um, so basically those disasters are you know you might never ever see one in your life <clears throat> it's possible <laughs> Or we might have one in a few years, <laughs> but um, but the ones that uh, but the disasters that are sure to happen are things like a sudden unexpected bill, uh, uh, death in the family, uh, a uh, <clears throat> or losing your job or getting suddenly very sick, as I was just sick, uh, getting. Um, getting injured to the point where you cannot work that's that's the situation where that money that you have squirreled away and nurtured along over the years that's that's the time when it could really save your ass 
and it would make a tremendous difference in your quality of life if you happen to have that money, whereas if you, uh, rather than if you didn't. <laughs> so um, now I'd like to look a little bit about the future. From what I've seen, um, I think I've told you guys this before, but from what I've seen, the economy goes through cycles, right? You get you get about maybe six or seven years of normal-ish uh, economy, and then you get a year or two of uh, of panic, or or maybe eighteen months or six months or something of uh, economic panic, right? And during those times, it's like the economy changes gears, and you can take advantage of uh, you can take advantage of the cycles because you know. If you live long enough, like I have now, <laughs> you can really, you can really start predicting this shit. You know, <clears throat> before it used to be a surprise to me. Like the recession of the 1980s, it looked to me like it was going to last for friggin' ever. You know, but now I just realized that it was just a blip. You know, it was just there and then gone. But um, the economy goes through boom and bust cycles, and Roughly every six, eight years, you get a big, huge panic. Uh, some of the panics are kind of small, and some of them are really fucking big, like the 2007, 2008 calamity. <laughs> but if you, um, but if you plan for it, um, and if you look at the way prices change in various things, uh, you can really profit from that shit. And Basically, it's what they call contrarian investing. Um, <clears throat> buying when other people are panic selling and, and then selling when other people are realize, you know, are acting like something's valueless. Like, for example, right now, uh, we're in a situation where uh, <clears throat> precious metals have been bid up like crazy um, during the uh, most recent panic, like 2000. Eight to 2010 or so <coughs> and now those things have been pretty much knocked down you know seriously down and I think the last time I looked silver was like $16 an ounce and that's like crazy cheap <laughs> um, if I were a guy who was like living in an apartment somewhere right now uh, I'd be doing two things we we my, in my estimation, we've got about another year or maybe 18 months before we have another big, huge panic, right? And um, what I would be doing right now is I'd be looking at your job and I'd be thinking, is this job able to survive and, uh, and do well um, in an economic panic collapse situation, right? Um, yeah, and it, would my skill set be more useful in another in another situation? Um, so I'd look at my skills, look at my job, and determine if you really want to ride that train <laughs> um, during the next big economic panic, right? Because if that's the case, how likely are you to be fired? That sort of thing. <clears throat> So that's important to look at. Um, I'd also look at um, during this this time right now. I mean, you almost can't go wrong buying precious metals. Um, now I'm a big Bitcoin guy, as you guys have known. And some people are probably laughing, saying, "Yeah, Bitcoins have been crashing." Ah, uh -huh. but um, man, it, man, the uh, the network is so 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 much potential it has such potential and it's so useful in a lot of things um, I'd, I'd like to make a video about that for next time but anyway um, it and it's growing like 45 percent of all Bitcoin transactions uh, since the network began were done in 2014 so the network is growing every I mean every day it's getting bigger uh, and even, of course, Microsoft still, Microsoft just started taking them, you know. And uh, probably not too long till Amazon starts taking them. But you can 
you can buy through Amazon with bitcoins, no problem. In fact, there's ways to get discounts. Like I got 10% off of some tools just recently. Or was it eight? I think it was more like 8%. <coughs> but basically, um, uh, but if, if you're like living in an apartment and not very wealthy at this point, I would probably say to slack off on bitcoins. Buy a little if you want, but uh, don't bet the farm on bitcoins. <laughs> But I'll tell you what you can trust, and that is precious metals. Now is the time where, where precious metals have just been slammed down, 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 man. And they just can't seem to go any lower than 16. I mean, there's just a freaking giant level of support at $16 an ounce. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'd be so surprised if it goes seriously below that. But... Um, but when the next big huge panic shows up, we're going to be having a situation where they're going to start getting bid up again when, when institutions, investment institutions and brokerages and start, stuff start going bankrupt. Um, we're going to see a situation where people are going to want to have something of value that they can just throw in their closet <clears throat> that will retain some value even if the whole economic system collapses and when that occurs that gold and silver are going to be bid right up through the roof again and uh, last time around i think it topped out at like uh, silver topped out at about 44 dollars an ounce uh, and and i was holding you know as until it started coming off but the last time around that was like 2012 and it was starting to fall and then but i wanted a house man i really wanted a freaking house i wanted to have a place where i could garden and do all this permaculture that i've been studying and um and then i just watched the property market and and it was going down and down and then it seemed to bottom out right around 2000 uh early 2012 late 2011 so that's when I just said, okay, and I cashed in half my silver as I was shopping for, uh, shopping for a house, and then I found this place. So we're going into a situation right now uh, where, where metals are going to be bid up again, and during that time we're going to see layoffs and we're going to see foreclosures just like 2008, 2009, and metals are going to go up and uh, property real estate values are going to go down down and down <clears throat> and it'll probably last about a year maybe 18 months um, and then watch for a bottom and if you're a guy who's got you know a good steady job and you're living in an apartment especially if you're a young guy like in your 20s or early 30s um, that would probably be the time to do what I did. Right around then, I purchased a uh, I would I purchased a condo that was 1990, 1998. Yeah, uh, but anyway, the time to purchase real estate is when everybody's panicking. <laughs> as long as you think that you're fairly secure in your job, you can. That's the time to make your move, man. And then. Once you've got your house or your condo or whatever you want, uh, then you're putting money away and you're building equity. And uh, then eventually you can do what I did and turn the property over to a feminist and have her pay you rent. <laughs> nice enough lady who's in my condo, but uh, uh, she is definitely a feminist and uh, kind of apologetic about it. <laughs> <clears throat> but I didn't I didn't uh, introduce who I am or anything that would have been no point in you know adding insult to injury <laughs> so um, anyway then you can purchase a, a house and then you'll or a property and you'll be able to deduct the uh, the mortgage from your uh, income and get a nice tax return every every year and I think that's that's the way I would do it. But right now, I would not recommend buying real estate. 
<clears throat> it's probably close to a high and the and the stock market's like pumped up to crazy levels <clears throat> but um, I would watch I would I would right now I'd be buying precious metals mostly silver unless you're like really rich or something um, <clears throat> and then when uh, the economic uh, panic hits that's when the precious metals will go up and then you can watch the real estate when the real estate drops down then you can cash in that silver take a tax hit <coughs> and then uh, then purchase your house or your whatever it is you want you know so that's what I that's the way I would do it by the way this is not financial advice because <laughs> uh, I'm a diesel mechanic not a financial advisor well anyway I would that's how I would recommend it uh oh the dog heard me she's gonna be barking at me <laughs> hello friend <laughs> well I guess I'll let you guys go later